What's up guys? Today we're talking about this week in video games. First up, we got a patch for Chrono Cross that came out last year. And now with this new update, things are coming in. The battles are gonna run smoother. They're gonna fix some of the crashes and some of the other problems. It's a little silly that it come in so late. You'd think that, uh, you know, a little closer to release date would have made sense, but I guess not. So it's coming out now, which it's good. I mean, battles are at 60 FPS and the frames are better and the game isn't crashing. They fixed something with Pip for, you know, a few people who <laughs> used him. So yeah, so that's a good thing. So if you're playing Chrono Cross or you plan on it, then it should be better. Next up, it, Rise of 3 has officially gone gold. So if you've been playing that Atelier series, Rise of 1 and 2 were the biggest ones they've had. Now 3 has gone gold, so be ready for that one. Next up, Jake Solomon, the director of the Marvel Midnight Suns and the XCOM series. Now, for Midnight Suns, he was in charge of the battle system. So that's important to note, because the friendship simulator stuff that most people didn't like, that wasn't his bag. But either way, he announced that he is leaving for Axis. Um, now, he's a pretty good director. He's done a lot, so it's very possible that he might be starting his own studio, but it hasn't been announced yet. Uh, so we'll see what happens there, but that was interesting news. Uh, it, I do hope that he finds his footing. The XCOM games were fantastic, and the combat in Midnight Suns, whether you like the rest of it or not, is up to you. But surprisingly, even with the cards, it was really, really good combat. And so, uh, you know, best of luck to you, Jake, and uh, we'll hope to see your game in the next three or four years. All right, and here's another one. The GOATI, the game of the year last year, Elden Ring, has announced that it has officially sold 20 million units. Uh, that's big deal, right? That's a big deal for FromSoft. Their their games have been really great, but you know, 20 million isn't something that uh, has has been their norm. So, Elden Ring is killing it. It was a critic success, and now it is a box office success. It is doing really, really well. And so, uh, you know, congrats to you, FromSoft. And uh, here's to the next 10 to 20. All right, next up, we had a bit of a funny news cycle here with Redfall for Xbox. Uh, we had this report come out that. Redfall's physical edition wasn't going to have a disc in it. It was just going to have a code. Uh, and so it made a huge wave online. Everyone was throwing a fit, upset, which I get because I'd be mad if that was the case. If it's physical, give me a disc. Uh, but the, so this whole thing blew up. And then the very next day, oh no, they put up a whole thing that says what comes in everything. And sure enough, a disc does come in the box. And so that got quieted pretty quick. Uh, so if you've been on that news, just know. It is going to have a physical edition that does have a disc. So, you know, there you go. All right, now sticking with the boys in green, Xbox had themselves a week. So if you remember last time we did gaming news, we talked about Xbox and their deal for Activision Blizzard and dealing with the CMA and how they talked about Game Pass, and, you know, cannibalizing sales and all that kind of thing. Well, this week to try and prove themselves to the CMA, uh, they did a number of things. First was a couple of deals. One was with Nvidia, uh, where they agreed to bring COD as well as it sounds like Game Pass and their PC stuff to the NVIDIA GeForce Now, which is their own uh, streaming service. We're gonna circle back around to that in a second. They also signed a deal with Nintendo. Now this is one we've known about for a while, but uh, they they officially signed a document with Nintendo that COD is coming to Nintendo. It's a promise that Call of Duty will go to Nintendo with parity day and date uh, as with Xbox and PlayStation um, and for the next 10 years. We shall see what comes of that, right? Cause there ain't no way it's coming this year. It, it, there's not enough time for them to port it to that system, especially for the Switch that is so underpowered now. Uh, it, there's just no way it's coming this year. Maybe next year, but if it even next year, it's going to have to be a really slim down port. Um, so, you know, maybe I, my guess is more future proofing. Switch 2 or whatever their new system is, maybe then we'll get the full parity. But um, either way, they, they signed this deal saying that COD is coming to Nintendo. Now, uh, all of this, right, it sounds okay. I mean, Nintendo, honestly, is kind of a whatever deal. Like, it's not a big deal. This game hasn't been on Nintendo for a long time. It doesn't make a huge difference. The NVIDIA one is a bigger deal because part of CMA's problem with Xbox acquiring Activision Blizzard is that they have this mass majority ownership of servers and cloud technology. Um, and so NVIDIA, who is a 
competitor of sorts in that arena, allowing them to have their games and signing a deal for them to use Xbox's games and stuff, um, probably running on Azure servers. But either way, that does give a bit of a sign to, you know, the, the people looking at the documents and to looking at Xbox's stuff that they are willing to play ball. Right, and so so that is kind of a big move on Xbox's part. And then what that does also is that that kind of leaves PlayStation on an island, right? Sony has been fighting against Xbox, but kind of with partners of you know Google and 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 Nvidia and you know whatever these people kind of going together. Uh, but now that they're signing deals, that that kind of takes Nvidia off, okay? And then Google is kind of silent. That kind of leaves Sony all by themselves. Uh, and so, really look at the big picture, there's a good chance, I think, that it's just going to go through. Uh, Microsoft just has the money to keep pushing. But, but, speaking of Microsoft, they had this presentation, right, that we talked about, it was coming, a presentation towards, to talk to the CMA and, and make their case as to why they should be able to acquire Activision Blizzard. And <laughs> the, the owner of Microsoft got up and put up a slide saying that... Sony had an 80% market share in Europe and how Xbox was the little guys and Sony was the big dog and they talked about how um, they're ready with a, a deal in his pocket. He like pulled out the piece of paper out of his pocket that he was ready to sign a deal with Sony and also that, uh, that, that Sony had only two of their games on, on Xbox but Xbox had 30 games or, on PlayStation. Which is a little bit ridiculous if you think about it because Xbox bought Bethesda, right? Remember this? And uh, Bethesda has a bunch of games on Sony consoles. And so they also bought, oh, what was the other one? Oh, Obsidian. Oh, Obsidian has games on Sony consoles. And so yes, Xbox technically has a bunch of games on Sony, but they weren't their first party pre. They don't put Halo on Sony, right? This. A little bit ridiculous inflated numbers there because they acquired uh, these companies that already have games on Sony consoles. <laughs> so, yeah, a little ridiculous, but, you know, that's okay. So, that, that's kind of, we're up to date <laughs> with the Xbox saga and acquiring Activision Blizzard. Again, my opinion is that eventually this is going to go through. Uh, I just, I don't see any way that this gets completely blocked for that long. Um, I just don't think there's enough data to support that. Now, I could be wrong. We'll see. Uh, we should be hearing more of that pretty soon this coming week. So don't worry. I'll keep you up to date. All right. Next up, we got a couple of games to talk about. Uh, this, this first one is called Bleak Faith. Okay. And it, it made a, its rounds just recently when they put out this announcement trailer. And, ooh, it looks good. But this game has been on my radar now for about a year. Uh, I could show you, I have, on my phone, I have notes from when I first saw a little trailer of it. But it's it's three guys, just three guys who are taking their attempt at like the Souls formula. But it's got a really cool art direction. Uh, the, the combat looks good. We'll have to feel it out, right? Because Souls games are that way. You have to feel them. If they don't feel right, the bosses don't feel right then it it doesn't work uh so that's hard to tell from the trailer but the trailer looks really good the customization of the characters look pretty awesome they had they go through like a flash of a, of a couple of different builds which you should be seeing uh on the screen but um bleed faith is, is really exciting to me and so i'm actually going to make a separate video on that where we'll go into depth on that we'll talk about it more so be on the lookout for that if you're interested now the next game and this is kind of the last piece today is uh just Thursday this week, uh, Sony had a state of play. And if you know anything about Sony, you know, or their state of plays, they tend to be on the smaller side. They do a really good job, in my opinion, of getting everyone kind of prepped for that, right? They they set the stage. They tell you. They said, this is going to have uh, 15 minutes of Suicide Squad. It's going to have six VR games and 10 indie and third-party games. Okay, so they, they kind of set you up to... to Keep your expectations in check. Uh, so do that, <laughs> right? It, uh, obviously, you can get super hyped and be bummed, but you know when when they lay out the expectations, I think it is smart and intelligent to prepare yourself that way. Just don't expect anything, and then you'd be surprised. That said, 
state of play came, and it was mostly nothing, at least for me. Uh, they had a kind of funny a Naruto port that's coming to PS5 where they're going to put the whole collection of the Storm Trilogy and the Naruto to Boruto on the PS5, which, okay, great. Um, if you haven't played those games, you know, they actually are pretty decently fun, but they're just nothing to me. That it, it doesn't look like it's new. They're not, like, remastering or doing something new to them. They're just kind of porting the whole collection. So, you know, whatever. Uh, they had VR stuff, which if you're a VR person, that's great. That's awesome. The, they need to support that. They're trying to sell it. So good for them. I just don't care. Um, and then they had 15 minutes of Suicide Squad. Now, if you are excited about Suicide Squad, I'm happy for you. Right? That's awesome. To me, it looked like hot garbage. I don't see how this game's gonna sell. I can't understand how the guys who made the Arkham series are making this pile of trash. It looks so bad to me. Now, hopefully I'm wrong, and it plays great, and everybody loves it, and that's awesome. Uh, but when I watch the trailer, it looks awful. I don't see anything fun in that. The story looks dumb, the characters look dumb. I just have zero desire. So, uh, if you disagree with me, you can let me know. Go ahead and tell me about it, and tell me why I'm wrong, that's fine. Uh, but to me, uh, that ain't that ain't it, man. That ain't it. But the one I do want to highlight because this was this is cool. Baldur's Gate 3 is coming to PS5 day and date with PC, uh, which is a big deal because up until now it has only been announced for for the PC. It wasn't on consoles at all. Uh, but now not only is it coming to PS5, but it's coming day and date same day. And they announced the official date. We knew it was August already, uh, but Sony must have talked with them and gotten the rights for this because now they announced it. It is August 31st. That is the release date. PC and PS5. Now, I don't know for sure if it's coming to Xbox. I'll look into that, and if it is, I'll let you know. Um, but this is another one we might have to talk about because this game looks awesome. That, and we talked about it some. If you're interested, I have a list of... RPGs I'm super excited for. Uh, you can go check that out. That'll be in the description below. Um, but, man, this game looks really awesome. Really, really, really good. And I'm really stinking excited for it. And so, so keep an eye out. I'm going to put up some videos about Baldur's Gate. We're going to talk about it. Uh, I'm very interested how it'll play on console. I, it looks like it'll play fine, but, you know, you never know. It's kind of a more of a PC-style game. But, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of those lately. Divinity, Original Sin, and... and Pillars of Eternity, those have been on console and have had awesome ports. So we'll have to see how it goes. But I am really, really excited for Baldur's Gate. So look forward to those videos on the channel. If you enjoy a video like this, you know, you're getting your news and stuff in one spot, would you leave a like button? That helps me out a bunch. It means a lot to me. Um, and if you enjoy videos like this, I do news and I do some gaming reviews and stuff like that. First impressions and, and lists of, of, of games coming up. So if that interests you, you know, consider subscribing. Uh, it helps me out and, and it, you know, you get to see the videos right away. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a good one and I'll see you next time.